Today I'm going to be going over a few examples of integrating the electric field and don't feel bad if this was hard for you. This question actually gave me a lot of grief when I was learning so uh, just keep with it. Keep doing the videos and you'll get there. Um, so let's start. So a positive charge Q is distributed uniformly along the x axis from x equals 0 to x equals a. A positive point charge Q is located on the positive x axis at x is equal to a plus r, a distance r to the right end of Q. Calculate the x and y components uh, x and y components of the electric field produced by the charge distribution Q at points on the positive x-axis where x is greater than a. Okay, so let's draw a diagram first. This is my x-axis, this is going to be my y-axis, and then I'll just draw the shapes here. That's going to be my bar, this will be my positive charge q, and then uh, let's just take a moment to see what's going on here. So if this is positive, this guy is going to have an electric field going outwards. And that good way too. And this way. And this charge would also have that. But because it's only asking us for the electric field produced by charge Q, uh, I don't think we'll need to worry about this guy too much. And then uh, the other thing to note about this guy is I always thought, well, like, what about the corners? Won't the corners be producing an electric field? And they will be, but you don't need to worry about that because that electric field is so small in comparison to these that you can essentially ignore that in your analysis because otherwise you'd have to take into account this angle uh, relative to this, and it would just get very messy. So we don't worry about that at our level. Uh, and I'm just going to undo some of the electric fields so that we have more space on the diagram. Okay, and so now what I'm going to do is start with our equation, which we learned from last video, which was uh, KDQ over R squared R hat is equal to the electric field, right? And so uh, now let's look at what we have here. So we know that k is going to be a constant, so that's fine. And then this dq, well, we just have a big q, so that's fine for now. And then this r squared, hmm, well, we do have an r here, and I'm just going to draw these on the diagram, actually, these dimensions, because we said that this was going to be a, and that this was going to be r, and then we do have an r here, but when you think about what this r was in the original equation, you know, it's the, um, it's actually the uh, distance from a uh, point charge to the point where you're calculating the electric field. And so if we, let's say we make our dq, let's make, let's split this up into dq. We have a dq and a dx over here. At this point, that's not going to give us the distance from our point charge to uh, the point we're calculating the electric field about. So we're going to need to come up with a new quantity for this r. And for that quantity, I'm just going to use x because we're on the x axis. And so that's all good. Um, and so now we know what to use for each of these. And then for this unit vector here, uh, we don't really need to worry about it because as we discussed earlier, the electric field is going to be coming out. And because we're only considering the electric field where x is greater than a, we really don't need uh, to include this because it's pretty obvious that the electric field is just going to be acting along the x axis. And so if we keep going here, uh, now let's rewrite the equation with all the new things that we had. So we had dq, and then we were going to replace r squared with x, and then we weren't going to write this anymore because it was going to be along x, and then this was still going to be equal to the electric field, right? And so now we're stuck because we don't have the mathematical tool set to evaluate uh, this dq when it's dx because when you think about the physical quantities involved this dq is a small point charge here and even though that charge is going to be uh, or that dq is going to be constant throughout this rod because the charge is distributed uniformly um, 
it doesn't really make sense that we have uh, with respect to a constant uh, and then a variable. So we're going to need to find out how to express this dq differently. And the way that we do that in this situation is because going back to that distributed uniformly um, set, uh, phrase again, we know that the linear charge density of the rod is equal to q over the length. And we can also write that as q over a because the length of the rod in this case is a. And then if we just want to take the uh, differential of that, we can do that. And so that's just saying for a small charge dq, we have dA. And that's all good because this dx and this dA are essentially the same because we're just chopping up the x-axis and chopping up the bar, which in this situation is going to be essentially the same thing uh, because we're just going to be integrating over the length of the bar. So it's never going to cause us any difficulties um, with regards to that. So really dA in all the situations we're going to deal with uh, in this problem is equal to dx. And so we can even write that lambda dx is equal to dq just by multiplying both sides here by dA or dx because they're equivalent. And so we can now rewrite this guy as k integral lambda dx over x squared. And so now what we have is a situation where we have a constant and then our entire integral is in terms of one variable. So great, so we can integrate that. And so I'm just going to take that uh, guy out, or this lambda out, because it's a constant, and then do a better integral sign. And then uh, we have 1 over x squared dx, and I can rewrite this as k lambda integral and then negative 2x dx and this is just um, me making it easier for me to integrate in my mind and so then this is going to be uh, negative 1 over x and I missed an important point earlier which was about the bounds and so when you think about this one thing that I find really helpful is an analogy to calculus. And so let me just draw a graph. So let's say you're trying to find this area here. Uh, and you know integrals, so you're thinking, okay, well, I can just take the top curve and then subtract the bottom curve, right? Uh, and so you'd be right about that. And it's kind of the same thing here in this situation. And so what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to I'll draw it out. We're going to take the electric field of this whole distance, like uh, from A plus R, we're going to take the entire electric field there, and then we're just going to subtract, I'll use the red for this, um, this distance here, this R, because we just want the electric field over this length A. And so if I go and write that now, we're going to go uh, a plus r and then r and then a plus r and then r and then a plus r and then r and then a plus r and r and then a plus r and r and there is another way to do these uh, bounds actually but I'm not going to do it that way uh, I'll upload that in a separate video it's where you take it from uh, 0 to a and so I'll upload that soon. Okay, so going back to the actual math here I'm just going to erase this guy for us And so going back to this guy here, um, let's now evaluate that So we now have k lambda and then we're gonna have negative 1 over a plus r minus 1 over r, right? And this guy's going to actually have a negative 2 because it was negative here, so that's going to turn into a positive, so we don't have to worry about that. Sweet. And so now the next thing that we have is we need to uh, express this in a bit more, let's see if we can clean it up, uh, 
to make it a bit nicer. So first step in that is, you know, we can write this as simply the charge over the length a, uh, this lambda here, and then we can write this if we multiply uh, this guy by a plus r, so, and this guy by r, we're going to get negative r plus a plus r over r times a plus r. And then we can cancel out these r's. And then uh, if we simplify that, we're going to get k q a over a r a plus r. And once again, these a's are going to simplify. And what we're going to get is k q over r a plus r, right? And that's our electric field. And that is our final answer. Woo, look at us go. And so, and we're also going to have to write one very important statement uh, in the x, oh, sorry. It shouldn't be so big in the x direction to indicate the direction of the field. And then we're also going to want to write Yahoo because we solved it. So that's very important as well. <laughs> and um, so that's great. And then the other thing that we want to do is answer the rest of the question, of course. And so let's see what it asks us to do. So it says, Calculate the force, magnitude, and direction that the charge distribution Q exerts on uh, small q. Okay, so if you look to your formula sheet, you'll probably see something, um, I'll do this one in blue, something, ooh, come on, something uh, like this, F equals EQ. And so the important thing here is that at not to get tripped up with the uh, symbols that they're using here and the symbols that they're using in the question. So here, this is the uh, force on, uh, let's call it Q1. And then this is the electric field. Oh, there should be vectors, sorry guys. Um, produced by uh, another charge Q2, and this guy here is Q1. So uh, keeping that in mind, we can write the force as this guy, which we got the answer from already, KQ, missed the K, uh, R A plus R, and then times, and then this is going to be the small Q, because it's the um, force that the particle is acting on, which is the uh, green charge particle in this case, point charge in this case. And so then we can write that F is equal to K Q over R A plus R and then small Q. And also, I guess technically in this case, we shouldn't have the vector arrow um, over this guy because technically this isn't a vector yet until uh, we write the statement in the x direction. And also this shouldn't have a q1, that should just be q. Okay, so that's our answer for uh, the next one. And then for the final one, we get to use white. And that question is, show that if R is much, much greater than A, the magnitude of the force in part B is approximately this guy. Okay, so for that, uh, let's say, we're saying that R is much, much greater than A, right? So, so let's just put some numbers to it. Let's say that, that R, you know, is some, let's say it's 12 trillion kilometers and that a is less than a centimeter does it really make sense to include a in this equation here and i don't know to my way of thinking it really doesn't so what we're going to do is we're just going to say that that is zero so if i rewrite it here um, so if i rewrite that and that is zero 
what I'm going to get is k big Q small q r squared, right? And so with that, I can now write this k because k is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, where this is the, I believe it's the permittivity uh, in a vacuum or something. Um, so then I can just simply rewrite f as 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times q over r squared. And this is equal to q over 4 pi epsilon naught. Oh, and um, sorry, that should be an r, guys. I, I'm going to erase that and make that neater. There we go. Okay. R squared. Okay, so, um, and is that what we were supposed to get? And that is what we were supposed to get. And so this result is obtained because we can make the assumption that uh, A is negligible. So because A is negligible, and that is also probably spelled wrong, uh, when uh, R is much, much greater than A. And that makes sense if we put some numbers to it. 